Shri Gurubhyo Namaha. Welcome to a new session of Social Science Children. We are just going to see about a very interesting lesson in history. Yes? So shall we go into the lesson? Let's see what the lesson is about. It is about the first farmers and herders. So we will see who are the first farmers of the human beings. That is the uh, after the stone age, how come this farming started? Okay, so we are going to see about that. So, we are first going to see about Neolithic age, right? So, Neolithic age is nothing but the new stone age, right? So, this started after the Mesolithic age was over. So, Mesolithic age when it came to an end, it gave way for Neolithic age just before 10,000 to 12,000 years ago. So, this new, new stone age started 10,000 to 12,000 years before only. So, during this new stone age, very big differences took place. So, vast differences, a drastic change in the lifestyle of people came. Okay? So, the earth became warmer and large parts of lands covered with the ice started to melt and plant and animal life became abundant. So, this to itself is a very big change in the Neolithic age. So, earth became warmer. We have already seen in Mesolithic age, right? In our previous lesson, we have seen during the Mesolithic age itself, the temperature started to go up and the glaciers, that is the surface of ice, started to melt and water levels were increasing. So, all these we have seen already. So, here you can see the earth started to become more warm and then the land where the ice was fully covered that started to melt in this stage. Then plant and animal life become abundant. So how come this is a change in new stone age? There was plants, there were animals, many things were available but how come this is a change in new stone age? Because many plants were taken as food by the old stone age people, right? They were collecting all the fruits, they were collecting all the berries, nuts and everything that was available and they were cutting down the trees for the wood, right? So, because of that, the level of plants was reducing and the same way the animals were hunted for their food, yes? So, now what happened? they have learned that they can grow up animals along with themselves. So, they understood that not all the animals are harmful. Okay. So, they understood that some animals are even friendly with human beings. So, they understood that in this period of time. So, animals and plants started to increase during this new stone age. Then, humans learned to grow their own food. So, they started that they can eat they understood that they can eat the grains so not only the animal or the fruits will be the food we can also eat grains they understood that during this new stone age then they started to settle down in a place so previously how they were living they were living a life of a nomad right so from the life of a nomad that is they were moving from place to place now they have started to settle in a particular place. Then important inventions were there during this new stone age. One was the wheel, right? The wheel which we use in every vehicle today, right? So that was invented in this stone age. Then fired pottery. So the pottery which the vessels or the pots were made with a clay which was heated. So they understood that the clay has to be heated and then only a pot can be made. So the fired pottery came into existence during this new stone age. So these inventions brought in many changes in their life. So after invention of all these, the many changes came into their lives. Okay, so we are going to see what are all the changes in their life happened just because of this invention. The impact of all these changes was so dramatic. Okay, so the changes were very big and so this period of human development is called as Neolithic Revolution. Revolution is nothing but a big change, 
okay so a big change so previously whatever they were doing now they have improved a lot revolution means a big change yes and all these changes did it did all these happen in one single day no not at all it took a lot of time okay many millions of years it took to bring about all these changes they understood one by one one by one one by one and that is how they started changing to the next level so this was called as neolithic revolution so what is the next thing we are going to see now so this change happened in various places at various points of time so not the change happened or in all the places at the same time okay so as we have seen the old stone age itself started at various places at various points of time right so the same way these changes also happened at various points of time and we are just going to see some of the achievements of this age so first we are going to see about farming okay so farming they learned about farming that we can grow grains on our own farming means growing crops or grains right so this development was a remarkable development in new stone age so beginning they were using only wheat and barley so these two were the important grains grown during the beginning of neolithic age so when they understood that we can grow grains on our own these two were the main grains grown by them so let us see how they would have understood about this farming okay so they were living the life of nomads for millions of years and then they began to grow their own food 10000 to 12000 years ago so they discovered how to grow crops so they understood how a crop will be grown how by seeing the normal grain sprouting the plant okay so we all know that the seeds the grains when we soak it in the water or when we just bury it in the sand it will start growing a new plant right so that is how they understood that when they saw that a grain can sprout itself and a plant will start growing from that they understood that they can farm it by themselves okay so they when they saw the plants sprouting from the seeds they understood that the plants grow by this way okay so the first crops by grown by them was wheat and barley so later what happened rice uh, oats and fruits were also grown by them right so at first when it started with wheat and barley then it uh, one by one they started growing various crops next domestication of animals and herding so we are going to see how the see previously they were hunting the animals but now they have realized that not all the animals are harmful they also understood that they can grow animals for themselves like the pet animals which we say it as pet animals today they understood that they can be grown and they can be kept with us okay so here you can see the small animals uh family members were there and you can see the animals uh, around them so here you can see ox bull cow everything was grown by them so now so how did we understand that they were growing these animals because after many excavations gone by the archaeologist so many fossils have been found okay from various archaeological sites they give us information that the various animals especially dogs had begun to be tamed during the paleolithic age itself so this started in paleolithic age itself but late paleolithic age okay so these animals especially dogs were began to be tamed tamed means controlled right so 
many animals were started to be controlled by the human beings so people understood that not all the animals has to be killed we can even control them so they understood that and that is how they started growing animals along with them so many other animals came to be domesticated from the neolithic age so beginning it was only about dog then later stage okay during the neolithic age many other animals were domesticated by the people then the animals like ox cow bull donkey goat and sheep were tamed and used for various activities so later as they developed or as they understood that various activities they are doing so they started doing more activities and that is how they understood that the animals can be used for making those activities animals will be helpful for those activities they understood that they started controlling their animals they brought the animals under their control so that the animals will obey them whatever they do whatever they say the animals started obeying them so they used animals for plowing the field plowing the field ox was used then carrying loads donkey used to carry the loads then ox bull will carry the load then cow even carries the loads then providing milk food and skin so again they they used meat from the animals they were able to understand that the cattle that is the cow will give them the milk goat will give them the milk and then they can use the skin also again animal skin was not a new thing to them sheep so they understood that the skin can used can be used in a better way right so that is how they started domesticating and they were they were able to control the animals easily then comes herding so what is meant by herding taking the animals in a group okay so previously they were having each group of people maybe they were having a minimum number of animals along with them but after the development took place after they understood that these animals are useful to them they started maintaining more animals along with them that is called as herding so herd is nothing but group of animals so they started maintaining the animals in group right so here you can see the number of animals owned by each family started to grow so the number of animals they have started to increase and this is how herding developed so as the number of animals decrease increased they had to maintain all these animals so that is how herding developed and animals had to be taken care of as a group and fed and sheltered so they cannot leave the animals as such so they have to feed the animals they have to provide them shelter so these animals were in the group so all these activities put together forms herding so they started maintaining the animals and the herd had also to be moved from one place to another in search of fresh fodder so what is meant by fodder fodder means food it is usually a dried straw for cattle right we have seen the cows or ox or the bulls even they eat the straw right the grass the dried grass they eat so they had to take the animals from one place to another for their food for feeding those animals they had to take the animals from one place to another then so this is how domestication of animals developed right so what's next shelter so people after learning to grow food and domesticate animals they started to settle down in a place okay so uh, they were not uh, moving around uh, at this point of time so they understood that they can grow their own food they were not uh, going in search of food right and they have their own animals to provide them food or any work they wanted to do with the animals so that was also there so now they understood that we have to settle in a place okay so that is how they started settling in a place started to settle down in larger groups in permanent dwellings dwellings is nothing but the place they stay
right so they started settling down in a permanent place so they prefer to settle in places closer to rivers and other water resources so wherever water was available wherever rivers were there they preferred to settle down in that places so as we have seen many uh, settlements right even in the paleolithic settlement we have seen hansgi valley so any place which was very near to a river they found that place to be comfortable for settling down then they started to build house with mud bricks stones reeds and branches of trees so they started to settle down uh, they started to build their own own house so previously how they built their house with the help of the long bones or the sticks they got and they covered it with the animal skin right so now they have started making mud bricks they used the stones and reeds are nothing but the long grass long dried grass so they used all these and they used branches of trees and they started building their own houses and the walls were well coated with plaster so they were able to make thick walls with the help of plasters and the regular feature of this neolithic age so what do we call these houses of neolithic age that was very beautiful in structure and we call it as pit houses okay so why do we call it as pit house because they did not have any proper entrance around on the ground level okay so they used to uh, go up okay the house was built in like a cone shape that is like a tent shape and there was a ladder left inside okay so there would be a ladder from the top there will be a hole on the top a ladder was there so they will get inside through that ladder okay so that is how they constructed their house and they were living in those house so here you can see a pit house which was excavated during an uh, do at an archaeological site so here you can see they have to go up so they will go up and here there will be a ladder and they will get inside through that ladder okay so they had a place to uh, keep fire so whenever they felt cold they had a place to put up fire that is how they enjoyed their campfires and people were large they were in large numbers and they were settling inside okay so they cooked there they did all their activities there and they were settling down inside itself so this structure is called as a pit house so another example for pit house you can see the ladder here so here they used uh, at uh, some places they used a proper entrance also so there was a ladder here so they used to get down inside and they can be there inside so once it was covered so here by this uh, ladder they will get go to the top they will get inside and they will go inside their house so that is how they were settling in the places so now what are we going to see in the next session yes it is about the invention of wheel yes that is going to be even more interesting see you soon in the next session children thank you shri gurubhyo namaha